Good morning everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Leaf Classes. I am Anshni. Children you know we are doing our practice series for section A and we have covered sessions 1 to 6 which include first 6 topics of your syllabus and the questions video of session 7 is also released and today I am here with the solutions video for the topic conditional constructs in Java. This is your 7th topic as per your syllabus. From this topic the questions can be asked in section A as well as in section B. For section A, directly theory based questions or output based questions can be asked. I have tried to include maximum previous year questions and other important questions for this topic. I hope like previous sessions, for this session also, you are ready with your solutions in your practice notebook. So just bring your practice notebook and Tell your answers with mine and wherever the correction is required, please do the correction. And in case of any doubt, you are always welcome to ask your doubt in the comment section. So let's begin with the first question that is differentiate between if else and switch. Children, in conditional constructs in Java, two videos are already there and I have explained you in detail about these topics. And here is the difference if else. If is bi-directional flow of control, wherever bi word is there, bi stands for two. So if the condition is true, it moves in one direction, otherwise in another direction. So it can move only in two direction for true and false. So if is bi-directional flow of control and switch is multi-branching flow of control. And in switch statement, we use the break statement as the case terminator. The last line of the case block is always break and in if there is no break statement used to terminate the if block. So break statement is not used for terminating if block, break statement is used to terminate a case. Now children please go with the easiest definitions, don't learn the difficult words so that it, is, it becomes difficult for you to remember, recall and then write during the examination. So just go with the basics and I know all of you are going to do very well in exams. Before we proceed, I want to tell you about a new feature launched by Unacademy. Yes children, this is Ask a Doubt feature where you can ask unlimited doubts at any time and get high quality video solutions by top educators. How to ask a doubt? Open the Unacademy Android app and click on Ask a Doubt. Take a picture of the question or choose one from your gallery. Crop the picture to one specific question and select your subject and that's it. Children, right now this is available for maths and all the science subjects. This feature would help you to ace your preparations for your final exams and especially to Get the solutions to important questions in a structured way. And this feature is open for all free learners and plus learners. All you need to do is fire up the Unacademy app and ask your doubt. So learners, take this opportunity to solve your doubts with our top educators instantly. Stay blessed. The purpose of default statement along with the example. So all of you know that default is used in switch construct which is executed when the control variable does not match with any of the given case value. And here I have written the example also. This is the switch block switch A. This A is a control variable and here we have two cases, case 1, case 2 and default case. Right? So default generally it is written at the end of the switch block. So if the value of A will be 1, it will display good and break will take you out of the switch block. Then case 2, if the value of A is 2, it will display better and it will come out of the switch block. But if the value of A is something else apart from 1 and 2, then only the default statement will be executed and whatever we have written in default statement will be executed. When the value of A is not 1 and 2. So here I have written the example. When A is 2. So A is 2. It will match this case. It will display better and it will come out. But when the value of A is 9. 9 is not given in any of the case values. So what will be the output? 
the statement written after default will be executed and the output will be best in this case. I hope you must have done this answer correctly in your practice notebook. Question number three is to give the name of two jump statements and their use. I have written here two jump statements break and continue. Break statement is used inside the switch block to terminate the case. Yes, it is given as the last statement of the case. Or it can be also used within the loop body to come out of the current loop, right? The second jump statement is continue. It is used only within the loops, right? And it is used to skip the current iteration. That means wherever we have given continue, it will skip the remaining statements of that iteration and the next iteration will start. We have one more jump statement that is return statement. Children, I will make one detailed video for the jump statements in Java. Question number four is to predict the output and here are the statements. Int x equals to 1, y equals to 1. If n is greater than 0, x equals to x plus 1, y equals to y plus 1. And the value of n are given 1 and 0. Now children here, one common mistake what children do. Here they will find the output for this. When n equals to 1, 1 is greater than 0. Then x will be x plus 1. That means 1 plus 1, x will be 2. And y will be also 1 plus 1, 2. And children, they leave the question, the solution here only. They don't do, they don't write for this because n is 0 and they think that the value is false. So nothing will be there, right? But you have to give the answer because you have two parts over here. When n is 1, what will be the value of x and y? When n is 0, what will be the value of x and y? So when n is 0, this condition is false. But still we have the values of x and y. So x will be 1 and y will be 1 in that case. So here writing all these are very important. Right? Even if the condition is false, you have to write any previous value is there or any calculation which is done. That has to be mentioned even if the condition is false. Question number 5 is also for predict the output. And here it is for switch case. Here one control variable is there with case view values are there. And you have to give the output for three cases. When OPN equals to B, OPN equals to X and OPN equals to A. So first we will start with OPN equals to B. Yes, this is matching with this case. So what will be the output? Object oriented. The output will be object oriented. Children, whenever you are writing the output where you have some string values written within the double quotes, so please do take care of capital and small letters. Here, O and this O is capital. So in your output also, it should come in capital. Please don't make it yourself small. Right? Now, after this, no break statement is there. If missing of break, is there that means it will fall into the next case and this condition is known as fall through condition and the statements which are there in the next case will also be executed so it will print object oriented and then it will come into this block also and it will print robust and secure this will be also displayed right so the output when OPN equals to B, we will get these two statements. The next is when OPN equals to X. There is no such matching case. So it will go to the default case, right? And what is written here? Wrong input. It will display the output. Wrong input. Again here, capital and small should be checked. Then OPN equals to A. Yes, the matching value is there. So it will print platform independent and after that break is there so it will come out of the switch block. So you have to write the output like this. That is why children for each question I am writing here so that you know how you have to write during the examination time. I hope it is clear to you. Question number six is what is fall through? Children, you know that if we don't give break statement after this block, then the 
fall through condition occurs and it goes into the next case block right so here i have written absence of break statement in any of the case block of switch construct generate fall through situation now sometimes the question can be asked like this uh, what we should do to avoid fall through condition your answer should be we should give break statement after each case block to avoid fall through situation so question can be asked in any form and i know all of you will write the correct answer question number 7 says give one advantage and one disadvantage of using ternary operator or conditional operator in place of if statement so the advantage is it leads to a more compact program the length of the program becomes less right because in place of so many lines you are just writing one statement using conditional operator and children you can go to operators and expressions chapter for the detailed study of conditional operator and the disadvantage is nested conditional operator becomes difficult to manage or understand when we have multiple conditional operator in given in the same statement then sometimes it is difficult so children the question can be asked like this it can be asked uh, give the symbol for conditional operator you will write question mark colon symbol or what is the other name of conditional operator you will say ternary operator so the question can be asked in different forms right question number eight says Rewrite the following if statement using conditional operator. Children, one very common mistake that whenever these type of questions are asked, children, they start writing from class main and then they input the values and then they do the checking and all, right? So here, whatever is given, you have to rewrite only these statements. You don't have to write the entire program for this. So just write it here with conditional operator. Now in which variable the value is being stored in CO variable and the data type is mentioned here. So you will write double CO equals to the syntax of conditional operator is that after the variable first you have to write the condition. What is the condition over here? A greater than B. So here if you want you can put this condition within bracket otherwise without bracket is also fine. Question mark. After question mark whatever has to be done when this condition is found to be true. That statement has to be written. So here if this condition is true this is executed. So here we will write this statement A asterisk B slash 100. And after colon symbol you will write the statement which has to be executed when this condition is found to be false. So here you will be writing A asterisk B slash 100 plus 10. Children please don't put the brackets yourself. Don't write anything extra whatever is given. Suppose in this question double word is not given. This double is missing here. Right. So you don't have to give. So then in that case you will start directly from CO. Right. So whatever is given you have to rewrite only those statements into ternary. The question can be asked to convert ternary to if. Suppose this statement is given and you have to convert this to if statement. So you will be writing if condition then this statement. This is calculated and stored where in this. So you will be using here and this statement will be here. So anyways it can be asked. Okay. Question number 9 says, what do you mean by dangling else problem? Dangling else is a confusing situation where it becomes difficult to understand that the else is of which if, right? Like here I have written the definition first. When there is a multiple if and a single else, then the else part does not get a clear idea to go with which if this situation is known as dangling situation, right? Now suppose here if it is written if n greater than 0 and if n less than 10 CTR 1 plus plus L CTR 2 plus plus. Now this else part is belonging to this if or this if. This becomes difficult. To avoid dangling else problem we must give the statement as the compound statement and for doing that we can use opening and closing braces. 
So for here, like I have written here, if n greater than 0, if this is true, this part will be executed, then that means it is checked if n is less than CTR 1 plus plus and this else will be executed for this if. If this condition is false, then only this else will be executed. So wherever you have the confusion that this else should be executed with which if that condition, that situation is known as dangling else problem, right? Question number 10 says to rewrite the following statement using if else. So children, if you see this is the condition and the values are written within double quotes. Within double quotes means the variable should be string type and here it is written string grade. So it is totally up to us. We can declare the variable first and then we can assign the values in that or at the time of assignment only we can write the variable type. So first I have written with if. Always whenever the condition is written without seeing the condition, you just write it with if. If and within the bracket condition. Now this will be executed when? When this is found to be true. So here I have written string grade equals to A. When this condition is true, A will be assigned to the variable grade. Here colon is there, that means this portion will be executed when this condition is false. So here we will come with else. If the condition is false, obviously else will be used. Now in else also one condition is there. So always condition will be used using if, if marks greater than equals to 80. Now if this condition is true, this will be executed and if it is false, this will be executed. So if this condition is true, what we have to assign? V into which variable? Yes. Into grade variable, B will be assigned. Else, string grade equals to C. Children, although only single single character is stored, but the variable type is string. So don't forget to put double quotes for it. Okay. Don't store it in single quotes. Okay. So this is how you convert the statement written using conditional operator to if else. Right. I hope all of you must have done all the answers correctly in your practice notebook. And you are enjoying doing this practice series with me. If you haven't subscribed the channel till now, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. You can join us on our telegram channel also. The link is there in the description box. Keep practicing, keep working hard, keep solving the questions. God bless your children.